Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. My name is Chaz Andres, and as always, let's get started with the news. The biggest story of this week is actually two different stories. First, we've had our first week of standard results, with Corset 2020 in the format, shaking up the metagame in some new and exciting ways. And second, we've got a major shift in the modern metagame, thanks to Briggs from Below finally getting the Banhammer. It was beyond time for that card to go, thanks to its absurd combination with Altar of Dementia and Hogak. Now, the addition of Corset 2020 into standard is not likely to move too many financial needles on MTGO. First, summer sets don't really do all that much to move the paper market anyway, because a lot of people don't want to invest in a new standard deck only a few months before rotation. But also, a lot of standard play, as you know, has moved over to Arena, with Modern being the primary driver of prices on Magic Online. So that's why I was kind of surprised to log on to MTGO this morning and see that there are actually quite a few standard cards doing pretty well this week. Now, granted, some of the standard cards that gained the most ground this week on MTGO are things like Karn the Great Creator and Finale of Promise, which mostly see play in Modern. But some standard-only cards did well as well. Cards like Mu Yanling and Shifting Ceratops from M20, they're on the way up, and they're mostly going to see play in standard. So that bodes well. It's nice seeing standard cards actually gaining ground again on the first week of a new format. That's a rarity in MTGO these days. Now, the fallout from the Briggs from Below banning is going to have even larger and more far-reaching ramifications. I'm already starting to see some price movement based on that banning, and I expect it to continue over the next couple of weeks. Cards have been gaining ground, like Bly from the Loam, which jumped four or five tickets this week, thanks to the fact that Modern Dredge is back with a vengeance. We've got Cavern of Souls gaining a couple of tickets, now that Humans is one of the two or three best decks on the format again. And you've got Jun Staples doing really well, now that that fan-favorite deck is back in the spotlight. On the flip side, cards that were really good in a format dominated by Hogak Dredgevine are on their way down this week. For example, Surgical Extraction lost about 7 tickets, Vengeoin itself dropped about 3, Rest in Peace is down about 2.5. And, and I'd expect more movement along these lines over the next couple of weeks, because with Briggs from Below gone, we can finally see what this post-Modern Horizons modern metagame is really going to look like. Let's move on now to Gaining Ground, where in Standard we had a major clear winner of the week in Dread Horde Arcanist. Gained about 10 tickets from 9 all the way up to 19. That's a pretty major gain for a card that has been slowly ticking up for a while now, but it really took off like a rocket this week, both on Magic Online and in paper. The paper version of this card is over $10 for the first time this week, and I don't expect it's done gaining ground either online or in paper. It's just so hot right now, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up around the 30 ticket mark at some point. So, what's behind Dreadhorde Arcanist's rise? Well, part of it is the fact that it sees play in the Feather decks in Standard. And, you know, that deck might actually be Tier 1, it runs 4 copies of this card, people are really excited about it, so that's definitely part of the puzzle. The most important part, at least in terms of MTGO though, is the fact that this card is seeing more and more play in Vintage Legacy and especially Modern. It's just good in every competitive format where it's legal right now, and the demand here is very legitimate. These major price spikes tend to be fairly temporary on MTGO, and selling into the hype is never wrong, but the demand here is quite real, and I would expect it to be at least a somewhat expensive card for months and years to come. Now, over in Modern, the card that gained the most ground this week was Ren and Six, which jumped about 12 tickets from 74 up to 86. But that's only a small part of the story, because this card actually peaked as high as 103 tickets earlier this week, which is a wild price for any card on MTGO these days. In fact, it captured the imagination of the entire internet, and people were talking about it, and people even bought this card out in paper because nobody wanted to miss the next $100 card. At this point, it's fairly stable in the 80 to 90 ticket range, but yeah, it was 103 tickets earlier this week. So yeah, at this point, Ren and Six's price tag does appear to be slowly dropping, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up somewhere closer to 60 or 70 tickets than 100, but don't expect this one to drop below 50 at any point soon. This card is expensive because it's very, very low in supply, and it does actually see a lot of play in Modern right now. It wasn't just speculators buying it out. So if you've got it, 
count yourself lucky. And if you've been meaning to pick it up, I wouldn't wait too long or expect too big a discount. It's a really good card. Let's move on to our biggest loser. We're in standard with Chandra Awakened Inferno, dropping 5 tickets from 20 down to 15. Now, Chandra is seeing some play in the new standard. Right now, it's seeing play mostly out of sideboards in the new Teamer Elementals deck, which looks like a really fun and exciting brew, honestly. But as you know, standard doesn't really drive prices on Magic Online, and I can't see this Chandra making too many waves in Modern. That tells me that this card is probably going to keep dropping. It may end up down near the five ticket mark at some point, but... Also, I don't know, because set redemption is the most important factor when it comes to mythics and new sets. So, who knows? It's possible this card is going to end up at 40 tickets or even more in the future. I cannot say with any certainty, but right now it is dropping off in price, and that's all we need to know. I'm selling. Moving over to modern, our biggest loser of the week was Urza Lord High Artificer, dropping 8 tickets from 20 down to 12. And unlike last week, where virtually every card in Modern Horizons was rallying up the charts, this week was more of a mixed bag. Cards like Hex Drinker and Seasoned Pyromancer continued rallying higher and higher, while cards like Urza and Giver of Runes took a bit of a tumble. Now, Urza's price drop actually makes a lot of sense in the wake of the Bridge from Below banning. Urza decks are just less well positioned in a post Bridge from Below world, as are Giver of Runes decks for that matter, while Hex Drinker decks are better. Hey, it's nice that, you know, price changes on Magic Online are actually making some sense there in line with the metagame. It's a fun change of pace, and I enjoy it, and I hope that, you know, that keeps up. Anyway, Urza might continue to drop over the short term, but I still really like this card over the long haul. As we just learned with Renin 6, really the sky's the limit for all Modern Horizons Mythic rares. So I'm going to wait a week, maybe two, and then buy in, because at some point Urza decks are going to be really good again. Now, our sneak of the week this week is Liliana of the Veil, a card that was as high as 100 tickets last year. It was down to about 17 in January, and it's up to 27 now and continuing to rise. Why? Well, Jund is on the move again. It's much better positioned in a post-bridge metagame, and it got a ton of nice new toys in Modern Horizons. People are building this deck, and they're putting up results with it. If Jund continues to do well, you can expect to see Liliana of the Veil vale start to rally and rally pretty hard. 100 tickets? Probably out of the question, but this one could hit 50 or 60 without breaking a sweat. I'd buy in now. As always, we're going to end the week by taking a look at the MTGO Trader's sales data over the past 7 days. And this gives us a great idea of which cards are selling the best right now, regardless of price increases or decreases. Looking at overall sales by volume on MTGO, Leyline of the Void and Graph Digger's Cage both sold absurdly well this week. Like, seriously, they were practically the best selling cards other than the 5 basic lands. And they're going to rebound sooner than you think. There isn't going to be a lot of Corset 2020 drafted on an MTGO, and at some point these modern staples are going to rebound and rebound hard. So you can wait a little bit if you want. They might drop another ticket or two, but I wouldn't wait too long, and I would definitely make sure that I had a playset or two of each at some point this month. Now, in terms of overall sales by price, it was Renin 6 at spot number 1, followed by Force of Negation at spot number 2, just like last week and just like the week before. Granted, it doesn't take too many copies of Renin 6 at the 100 ticket mark to top this list because that's an absurdly expensive price for a card in MTGO, but still, Renin 6 did really well this week. The most interesting card on this list is definitely Liliana of the Veil. Vale. It's our sneak of the week, and it sold really well this week up at fourth place on this list, so I would expect some price movement next week to match. And that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chaz Andres, and I will see you again next Monday morning for another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance.